listening to Flush Your Fat for Good with Jackie and Dr. Vicki, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hi, Flush Your Fat for Good buddies, newbies, looky-loos. Uh, <laughs> newbies. Yeah. This is our second attempt. This is our second attempt. No, I'm just kidding. We had a show that had a little bit of a glitch in it, so we decided the show must go on. Who said that? A deranged entertainment director. So this show must go on. <laughs> so several, several. Um, we're happy to have you with us. We're uh, flesh your fat for good to be lean and healthy for life. My name is Jackie Paget Baird, and I'm Dr. Vicky Arcady. And we have a guest with us, Spice Williams Crosby. Hello, Spice. hello, Spice. Thank you for having me. And yeah. they're twins. Ta-da. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, let me tell you who we are first. This is a lifestyle for a lifetime. This is uh, health by design. This is not a diet because the first three letters in the word diet is die. <laughs> Which, I mean, come on, 30, 60, 90 days, you lose the fat and then you go to the event and when you're done, you gain it all back. You really think that's for longevity. Mm-hmm. That's very dangerous on your heart, on your liver, on your gut, everything. So. We have a lifestyle that is for good. That's called Flush Your Fat for Good. We want you to go to the website. The website is flushyourfat4good.com. Check us out because we have uh, a workbook that will tell you exactly how to live this lifestyle to get rapid, safe fat loss off quickly, to never crave again sweets and starches and things like this to think sharper to sleep deeper to have better moods uh it's all about digestion absorption and elimination i don't know of any diet that talks about that and because this is not a 30 60 day deal this is actually what you do until the day you take your last breath because that's that's what it's about really why should you have to always struggle with your weight Why should you always have to worry about having three different size clothes in your closet, uh, you know, in all three different sizes, but in grays and blacks? It's It's habitual ritual, too. Well, that's what we do. It is called habitual ritual to get you on a a lifestyle that is automatic. And it's, it's different, but it's not difficult. And if you ever learned how to drive a stick shift car, which I did, you I did. did. Me yeah. too. Well, you're a stunt yeah. car driver, but um, and add that to the list. If anybody, <laughs> if anybody says, um, "Hey, I'm learning to drive a stick shift. Can I borrow your car to do that in?" Yeah, we all know. You say no. Yeah, you're not touching my car, but that's because you're practicing at it. But once you do it, it's like a bike. You never forget. Plus, no. you're fat for good. We have eight pillars that are part of this lifestyle. You follow those to a T. I always do that naturally to a T, <laughs> and uh, and then it's amazing what happens. But we have a Flush Your Fat for Good Buddies Facebook page. We want you to go over there, check it out, request to be one of our buddies, and uh, we do these podcasts once a week. So we're excited to have you with us. We are going to be talking about different things every week. That is going to. Uh, be kind of the hub of knowledge so that when you guys want to know some really good information that you can't get anywhere else or if you're trying to find something that's uh, you know helpful for your health you most likely you're gonna find it here because this is flesh your fat for good to be lean and healthy for life we did write a book our co-author with dr. Vicki and myself is Kathleen Powell and um, we want to do a shout out to Kathleen. Hello. And a shout out to Vaughn Stevens in Oklahoma, who loves our Hi, um, our podcast. And she was probably just watching for the last hour, going, "Where is it? I don't see it." <laughs> so, anyway, um, go to the store when you get to the website and check out the workbook. You can download it for a digital, or you can have it sent to you. And there's other things there. Uh, Our supplements that we recommend are GLA-CLA, GLA GLA to stimulate the brown fat to burn the white fat, 
CLA to prevent the enlargement of fat cells and also to establish lean muscle mass. And also, all you have to do is find out what CLA is good for, and you'll just say, give me 10 of those. A lot of benefits. Incredible. We actually, health benefits. maybe next week we should talk about that, too. That would be okay. great. All right, so. <laughs> she's I just, the director. I just listened to her. I, I put my order in because she's the researcher. Right, Spice? She's the director. <laughs> I'm taking so, those now. <laughs> really quickly, I want to go over this because I usually do this at the end of the show, but God only knows what's going to happen at the end of the show. <laughs> um, on the store uh, of our website, you will see charts that are very, very cool. We have starter kit number one, starter kit number two. Starter kit number one has all these charts to help you live by this lifestyle until you become your own guru. We're not your gurus. No. We are your guides to help you to be lean and healthy for life. And so there's these charts and there's- The grocery list. Yeah, the grocery list. Wait. Very, very cool. And also the workbook. And uh, starter kit number one has all the charts in the book with the GLA, CLA. Starter kit number two is without the GLA and CLA. And once you're checking out all of that, um, you'll see um, why this is so effective. Uh, we have different levels. It's a uh, free to join and then we have a gold level and then we have a VIP level. We have over 23 videos uh, to educate you and see us in the kitchen cooking the staples of what we want you to eat all the time. And we have the explanation of to how this came about. It was through divine intervention and it has saved many, many lives. We have many thousands of people doing this in five different countries and we're very excited. And with our new book that we just wrote, Guess what's the name? Um, um. <laughs> oh, yeah. Flush your fat for good. Right. Be lean and healthy for life. It oh. was picked up by a New York publisher. We're excited. We're going to do a it. book tour. And you guys are learning about us right now before the book is out. So we're excited to make you our buddies. And right now is my favorite segment uh, because Dr. Vicki Arcady is a researcher. Outside of all the other things she's done, she's written books and she's done studies in uh, a pediat pregnancy, pregnancy pediatric genetics, like things like this. The girl's been around. So, <laughs> <laughs> but when I want to know something, I say, you know, hey, what do you think about this? And then you don't hear from her for like six weeks. <laughs> so now she, uh, so every week we do, did you know that? So we're going to do a segment on, what is it this week? Food combining. Yes, ma'am. Pillar take, number two. Take it away. What? No. Did you say my, something? No. That, oh. I was thinking very oh. loudly that <laughs> that's my favorite subject. <laughs> Food combining. We did uh, nutritional ketosis, pillar number one last week. This week is food combining because it is, I think, one of the most important parts of our lifestyle. Yeah. It's, the, it's really the, um, what do you call it, the core, the spine of it because phase one is for rapid fat loss and you have all your pillars, but phase two is where you incorporate back, you know, to a normal, like a normal type of diet where you have your starches and your, you know, other foods that you eliminated in phase one. Um, but I wanted to say that amongst the three of us combined, we have over 100 years of food combining. Wow. Cumulative and together. I, I just feel so old now. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That, it's, but that's a century, good. baby. We doing, look good for being that old. I know. I was doing just fine <laughs> till you said that. <laughs> but I mean, this is like you said in the last podcast. It didn't work. <laughs> she says it's like a religion, and it, it it does become a religion. You know, it's like a way of life, and you. You have, you know, you've got to have a blueprint of, of your lifestyle. You've got to know how to eat. And one of the things that changed my life was, I remember studying physiology in chiropractic school uh, about digestion. And I remembered how uh, starches and proteins digest in the gut and that when you uh, digest your proteins and you follow it immediately or together with a starch, all digestion stops. So when that happens, that's because you're mixing starch with protein. And uh, you know what happens is it ferments in there. Um, it putrefies or rots in your gut. I mean, you can get an ulcer easily this way. Yeah. Um, and it just 
causes so much um, energy to be wasted. If you've, you, we've all eaten Thanksgiving dinner the wrong way, miscombining, eating the turkey and the potatoes and all that stuff. You're not supposed to mix protein and starch together. And uh, what happens at, at Thanksgiving dinner? Everybody fights for the couch yeah. because mm -hmm. there's so much energy and your body it can take up to 13 hours for that food to get out of your stomach. Um, there's been very little uh, research done on food combining and there's many, many practitioners out there who don't believe it at all. They think it's crazy. Uh, but there has been uh, valid information throughout the years since the late 1800s, especially um, it started with uh, Pavlov, Ivan Pavlov, a Russian physiologist who worked with uh, dogs and he checked their digestion. He timed how long it would take for the food to, c to protein to leave the stomach, which would be four hours. Starches to leave the stomach was two hours. And then when you miscombine, you put protein with starch, it can take up to 13 hours. And he won the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1904 for that. So that's, that's not shabby. No. And then after that, uh, uh, a medical doctor by the name of Dr. William Hay, he probably, you know, he, I'm sure he learned about the Nobel Prize and what this man did with digestion in dogs. And he uh, decided that since he was 225 pounds, he had been in practice 16 years, and he had heart problems, he had uh, kidney problems and high blood pressure, that he thought, well, maybe it's all because I'm not food combining. I'm not eating appropriately so that I can digest my food properly right. and mm -hmm. easily and with ease and uh, without a burden. So he went on uh, the food combining uh, you know, program, and he practiced that, and in three months, he lost 50 pounds. Nice. Right. So his health conditions improved and everything, and, you know, what, what happens is when you reduce the energy from combining your foods properly by not mixing the proteins with the starches, by, by uh, eating fruits alone and waiting the appropriate times. For fruit, it's 20 to 30 minutes, low glycemic preferably. Uh, protein is four hour, four, at least four hours, and starches, carbohydrates, and vegetables, two hours. So when you wait that amount of time and allow the, the contents of your stomach to leave your stomach, now you have an empty stomach, and now you're ready for the next food. And most people out there have food in their stomach all the time. Yeah. They, they cannot... Just imagine, you eat a sandwich for lunch with protein and starch, and, uh, or for, you know, for lunch, and then you go eat dinner four hours later, it's still in there. It's not left yet. It takes eight to 13 hours for that to leave. So now you're compounding it with you know, mashed potatoes and chicken, and now you've got, I mean, your, your body all night, no wonder you can't sleep. Yeah. No wonder you're tired every day. You wake up in the morning and you still probably have food in there. Yeah. You're so bloated. It's, you it's feel bloated. The, the point of food combining is to take the burden off digestion so that you have more energy for other things like healing, like repair, you know, like cleansing of your cells. You don't want that, um, you don't want that burden on digestion. And when you see, it's very important because when you see a mammal deliver its young, what does, what's the first thing, or a mother delivering a baby, what's the first thing that baby does? Yeah. It oh. crawls to the breast, it mm -hmm. needs the food. It's, gl it's glucose to the brain, that's the priority, glucose to the brain. Food is the most important thing in all living things. So you, you want to make sure that there's no burden on the system and you save your energy and, and the body's reserves to take care of things that are necessary to be cared for, like uh, cancer cells like uh, your immune system, yeah, you viruses, know, viruses yeah. bacteria, mm -hmm. everything airborne, you know. You, so what, what we like and what I know Jackie and Spice studied was um, Dr. Herbert Shelton's book mm -hmm. in the 50s, Food Combining Made Easy, and um, he also wrote uh, other books. Um, what was the name of that book? I said dental. Oh, it was the hygiene the hygiene books, right. yeah. <laughs> the really hygiene system, and yes. he had several volumes. Well, in, this, in his book, he quoted a study from 1945 
uh, Dr. Kaysen, which Walter Kaysen, right. who was a medical doctor, and he had two assistants, two aides, that studied, um, you know, what would happen, how long food would take to digest in the stomach. What happens if you, each food group, how long does it take to digest? He studied that and, and uh, calculated that and noted that. Then he, st then he saw and studied what happens when you com miscombine the foods. You eat a protein with the starch. And he studied the stools of those people that when they combined the, s the protein and the starch. And I'm going to read his quote real quick. And what he said was, such tests always reveal that the digestion of proteins when mixed with starches is retarded in the stomach. The degree varying in different individuals and also in the particular protein or starch ingested. An <coughs> examination of the fecal matter reveals both undigested starch granules and protein shreds and fibers. Yep. Whereas when ingested separately, each goes to a conclusion. If food is properly combined, it is fully broken down, absorbed, and utilized by the body. No undigested fragments will show in the feces. We also find when foods are eaten in incompatible combinations and fermentation results that alcohol is produced in the digestive tract with the same consequences that would come from drinking alcohol with the same potential for liver damage. And we talked about this, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in 30 to 90% of obese people, 20 pounds or over. And, um, you know, and then it could go into the NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is, can result in liver cancer and death. And you don't even drink alcohol. You don't right. even know it. You don't even know it. It's <coughs> not. It's not symptomatic. Right. The only way you find it is through your lab work, where you see your liver enzymes, or ultra and or ultrasound. So, this is you know it's important that if you have any issue like heartburn, um, you know fatigue, Gerd, sleeping problems, you know gastric reflux, Gerd, yeah. uh, f you know fatigue. Did I say fatigue? Yeah. Yeah. Bloating, uh, stomach aches. Uh, cramping in your stomach, any kind of distress or low, low, low energy, you can be sure that it's probably going to help you to food combine. And I would recommend that you go and get our workbook on yeah. flusherfatforgood.com. Check it out. It's all in there, <coughs> easy to read, easy to follow, and it is a learning curve. And, you know, if you mess up on one meal, forget about it. Just go to the next one. Note that in your brain, what you did, and go to the next meal. And just continue, continue. And I guarantee you're going to start to feel better within a few days. Can and we I guide you through this. Can I contri yes. contribute yeah. a little bit to yes. that? Um, <coughs> Since you're a doctor. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> um, I wrote a book on food combining. And my right. if I can finish the book that I'm writing right now, it's called Are You Sure You Want to Live? Because dying is so much easier. <laughs> to many people. It's true. That's it is. true. But anyway, the thing that people need to understand is that when you eat flesh foods, mm -hmm. um, the hydrochloric acid, pepsin or repsin, um, this is all the acids that pour in to break down uh, your protein and break them up into little amino acids. Right. Now, Correct. when you eat a starch, Tylen, it's in your mouth, amylase, maltase, all of the alkaline digestive juices pour in. So for some people that don't understand, well, I don't understand why the, the protein and the starch don't combine. If you have stomach acid, you take Alka-Seltzer. Why? To neutralize, neutralize the acid. Right. So if you good point, I you, forgot to say that. If you, you. I saw it on your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> but Let if me you, see. <laughs> <laughs> if you neutralize the acid that's supposed to break down your protein, right. then you can't break it down. It and, sits there. Well, and then that potato that you ate ferments to vodka, and then the starch rots. I mean, the uh, protein rots and putrefies, and now you have this mess that sits in your gut. Horrible. So the pylorus valve opens up, the peristalsis pushes all the food through 30 feet of intestines while you're absorbing now gases and all kinds toxins. of fermentations and toxins. Right. Anyway, okay. thank you but for getting so graphic. Yes. I was <laughs> oh, see, I like this. Wait, but I didn't get to the flatulence. <laughs> but see, uh, what I remember is you eat you eat the protein and all the acids and go in there, and the brain says, okay, there's protein here. I gotta take care of this. So you get the acids going on. You throw down a potato, a bite of potato, like Thanksgiving. 
throw down a bite of potato. Now everything has to stop because the pancreas has to put put the the uh, the oh, appropriate enzyme. enzymes in there to handle the starch. Now it's all neutralized and it just sits there. And yeah. another thing, uh, we like the fruit eaten by itself. Yes. Uh, because that digests so quickly. But if you have sugar. We have a lot of sugar holics, and this is another mm. thing with flush your fat for good. You lose the cravings in 72 hours, but sugar immediately stops digestion. Stops everything. So yeah. what does this all relate to? Fat, being fat and sick. And we're, if you're sick and tired of being fat and sick, you need to go to fleshyourfatforgood.com and get our workbook. It can also make you depressed. Oh, yeah. Extremely, because you're tired. And it, you have no and it energy. takes your hormones all out of balance. Your food is the key, and the, the key secret to everything. for everything. Like the newborn baby. Yeah. Um, straight for the food. So uh, speaking of food combining, um, <laughs> we have a food combining a vegan, okay? <laughs> and um, <laughs> that, that I, I did make an error. But Kathleen, she caught it, thank God, on the email that I sent out of food combining Bacon. <laughs> vegan. V and B are close to the keywords. Oh, really? Um, I'm a But I thought now. she was begging for food. Now. <laughs> um, begging but vegan. The reason why we have a lot of um, vegans that join Flesh or Fat for Good because they don't know how to eat properly. Yeah. If you are a, a meat eater, uh, then, you know, most of you don't know how to eat properly either because you should be eating the flush your fat for good way since you were weaned. We have phase one, which is for rapid fat loss. Once you get all your fat off and you look in the mirror and you're butt naked and you go, I like this. You know, I like how I, I look. I like how I feel in my clothes. I, I feel healthy, strong, and lean. Then we take you into phase two. And this is where we teach you a lifestyle for the lifetime all the way until you take your last breath. Right. Which reminds me, my big question is, how old do you want to be when you take your last breath? I well, my big question is, how do you want to die? Uh, by a jealous lover. But I, <laughs> I, I want to live to 111. You want to die healthy. Yes, okay. I so, want to die walking erect, you know, just n moving around. You just around. want to drop on the street? Active. I don't, I'm, no wheelchairs, nothing. I want to okay. do what I'm doing now. All right, so this could go on for hours, but... <laughs> <laughs> I want to introduce you to Spice Williams Crosby. And we don't even have enough time to tell you all that she's done. I think I'll take a nap. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> me too. Um, <laughs> I'm bored with me. I'll, I'll wake up our guest in a minute. Uh, but um, she's an actress. She's a famous actress. She was the famous female Klingon in Star Trek V. Say something. I agree. Hello. So therefore... <laughs> A stunt, yes, ma'am. Stunt woman and stunt coordinator. That's not easy, especially when you're <laughs> jumping off buildings and setting yourself on fire and throwing yourself downstairs. That's, be, that's before I get to work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, martial art. She's a stu um, Hollywood Stuntmen's Hall of Fame founder of Stunt <laughs> Emmy. Uh, Martial Arts Hall of Fame and Martial Arts History Museum Hall of Fame, mm. winner of the Diamond in the Raw Award. Uh, she is producer of I Fight for My Life. We are going to talk about that a little bit later. Nutritional author. She's written several books. Olympic statue. You're in front. You you've been modeled in bronze, right? In this. I represent the past present and future female athletes of the U.S. Olympic uh, Academy and the, I mean, the U.S. Olympic um, Games and the Pan Am Games. But that's in... In the statue. Yeah, it's is Colorado, that in, right? Is that Colorado. in Boulder in of, in, or Denver? No, uh, Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Coach Jennifer, hi, Coach. I hope you're watching. And Kathleen. And they Kathleen. Went. They both went. They saw you there. They oh, took yeah. pictures. And I said, let me remind you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stand like that while they scanned my body. Good Lord. Oh, Lord. Scan me. So um, <laughs> then world-renowned vegan bodybuilder. Now, this is what we're talking about. You know, if you're going to be a bodybuilder. Show those guns. You better. There you go. Hello. Vegan. Okay. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Drug-free, squatted 315 pounds, bench 235, leg press 820. Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> Peace. Okay. So martial artist, uh, professional wrestler, runner, 
um, master in holistics nutrition, but she has her PhD in holistic nutrition contender. Is that how you say contender? it? Contender? No. 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 Holistic nutrition. She has nutrition. her PhD. Who wrote that thing? <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, you have your PhD. I have my PhD in natural health science. So okay. There you go. Good enough. She wrote a book called Diet for a New Age. Yes. I, look, it can go on and on and on. What I want to ask you, first of all, is um, you're a food combining vegan. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I am. How long? 40 years. Okay. So maybe she, kno maybe she knows something. Um, well, it all took place on uh, September 19th, 1977, when I had my third drug and alcohol overdose. And I rolled out of the bed, crawled through the living room into the kitchen, pulled myself up on the stove and looked up in the air vent where I knew God lived at that moment. Okay. And said, okay, here's the deal. Help me turn my life around. I swear I'll be an image that changes the world. And then I looked around like, oh crap, who said that? And then I realized I made an act of conviction that I was never gonna drink, smoke, do drugs, or do anything. And the first thing I had to do was detox, yeah. clean out. Mm -hmm. So I found this chiropractor, Dr. Armand Gilbo. I don't even know if he's still alive, but anyway, he took me into his office and started muscle testing me and doing all of this fakaka that I thought was voodoo, but I was game. I already made the deal. And he said... Applied kinesiology. It was polite, applied, applied kinesiology. kinesiology. And, um, you know, with the vitamins on my tongue and yep. muscles. Yeah. That's and it. All yeah. the stuff that's, that's, that's what, what I do. do. That's yeah. What I do. Well, that's what I do now. Yeah. yeah. All those years. But we're talking 1977. And I said, I need to... He said, you need to detox. I said, okay. And he said, I'm going to send you to this woman. So I drove down that road down that road down that road and we're in las vegas and i'm down out in the boonies and there's a big barn and i pull up and i knock on the door and i hear come around in the back honey and i go around and here's this little white-haired lady in a chair that rolls and she's on the phone doing you know buy low sell high i have newt all this stuff <laughs> and, and all of a sudden she goes what do you need and I said, um, Dr. Armand Gilbo sent me here. He said that I need to detox. She goes, okay, I got it. She brings out a big colonic bag. <laughs> she starts pulling all this stuff off the shelf. And she goes, okay, you need to do this, 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 and that. I want you to do a seven-day detox, cleaning out the Sony's program, all this stuff. And here's a book you have to read. Food Dr. Herbert Shelton. Shelton. Dr. Herbert Shelton. Food combining, Food combining made, made easy. Which, by the way, it's not that easy when you read it. No, it's not. No, it's, it's, no, not. it's not. No, but, but it was then, 1952, and this was right. language that nobody knew. But my mind wanted it. Yeah. Yes. And when your mind wants to learn something, you're you hungry. Yeah. And out of that, and then there was Wayne Pickering and a lot of other Gary right. Knowles. A lot of other people came out with food combining books. But Dr. Herbert Shelton became my mentor at that moment. Yeah, and yeah. so I started learning the <laughs> digestion times of foods. And knowing that meat and potatoes and sandwich and chicken mm. with rice and all that. Hot focaccia, apple pie it, after your it, turkey dinner. Yeah, and, and it took so long. And I'm like, well, I like to eat too much. I, I want to cut back on some foods. And if I can separate them and do my fruit, you know, fruit, eat, eat alone or leave it alone. Fruit, you eat alone or leave, leave it alone. It alone. Right. And good, then all of a sudden we were all raised on uh, raisin bran. And right, you're like, right. oh, well, well, and then we're all raised on sandwiches. The, the truth of the matter is, caveman woke up out of a cave, <laughs> yeah. climbed to the highest tree, ate some fruit, right. surveyed the valley, right. later on walked through the valley eating whatever they, grasses, grains, and insects. And then if they happened along to a dead animal, they'd eat that. But nobody made a, nobody grabbed it all home and made a big giant plate right, right. or a sandwich. No. Man has destroyed his own digestive tract. So Correct. I learned all that stuff. And before I knew it, I was at a party. And it was at Christmas Eve around 1979. And a guy said to me, a big buffet, go, you got to try the ramaki. And I'm like, Chicken livers and bacon? Nah, I don't do that. And he goes, we'll try the fish. I said, yeah, I don't eat fish. He goes, we'll try the, try the eggs. I said, yeah, I don't eat eggs. And he goes, what are you, one of those damn vegans? And I'm like, don't you dare talk to me like that. <laughs> he goes, I was insulted. And so I left, and the first thing I did was I went to the dictionary. What's a vegan? What's a vegan? It wasn't even the book. And then um, 
I was doing a movie after that, uh, getting physical, it's about bodybuilders and whatever. But I had a guy call me and saying, you know, I use Spice Williams, and I, at the time I wasn't Spice Williams Crosby. And uh, I said, yeah, and he goes, well, I, we understand you're a vegan. And I'm like, well, what is a vegan? And he goes, do you eat this, 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 and that? And I said, no, I don't. And he goes, then you're a vegan. And I'm like, wow, I never knew that. I didn't even know I became something. It wasn't for animal reasons, and it wasn't for religious reasons. For health. It was for health. Right. Now, I will tell you that later on, of course, spirituality, when you detox and clean out, you, come, you become closer to God. You become more spiritual, yes. and you see more things. It's You're more healthy like, body, right? healthy mind. But this guy was the contributor and head editor for uh, Vegetarian Times, mm -hmm. and he said, well, you're doing movies, and uh, you're becoming famous, and we understand you're a vegan, and we would like to put you on the cover of the Vegetarian Times. So you recognize that it really changed your health? made you strong, made you capable of doing all that you've been doing. And it made me feel very um, um, one with myself because mm -hmm. I was in control. I was also a bulimic for 10 years. Mm -hmm. When you take drugs away from people and they're an addictive personality and y you go, oh, well, what's left? Oh, let's just throw up. You know, you're a bit- You trade one yeah, for well, the other. Yeah, right. and, and really, I other. did go to therapy and they said, you know, as you're shoving down all these feelings that you had, right. then you purge yourself of those feelings and then you think you're getting thinner, but no, you're not. No. So for me, food combining with the science, and there's the science, look, I'm a vegan, I'm not telling anybody they have to be a vegan. I believe in veganism. But there's a science to eating veganism, and there's a science to eating meat, and there's right. a science to eating everything, which you guys have put together. It's a lifestyle. Right, it's correct. like this is an envelope of flesh that I believe we incarnated into as a gift from God. If you can't treat it properly, then, then what are you doing? You're kind of spitting in the face of God. Well, that's exactly. why, and, and that's why we say healthy body, healthy mind, but this whole flesh or fat for good was given to me through divine intervention. Right. And we wrote our book, and our goal is to get it around the world. Like I said, we're in five different countries, and we want to address globesity, which is now obesity globally. So we're very passionate about this, and the more education we can give you on how you can learn to feed yourself appropriately and never struggle with your weight again, that's our passion. Um, you know, okay, so food combining vegan, while you're bodybuilding, while you're doing all these movies, you're, ma you're, you're in the movies, but now you're making movies. And, uh, you know, your husband, which is Bing Crosby's grandson, Gregory Crosby, and my brother-in-law, who we're really, really proud of, you got, he did uh, Hacksaw Ridge, and uh, Mel Gibson directed that, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mel Gibson came out of uh, retirement, actually, to direct that, but Gregory right. had that, that story. He met Desmond T. Doss, the right. only Medal mm -hmm. of Honor winner that won our country's highest honor without touching a gun. He met him almost, at this time, it's got to be about 18 years ago, and for 50 years, every producer in the business tried to get him to make a movie on his life. I mean, you name it, even Audie Murphy, who was a Medal of Honor. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, no, you know, doing business in Hollywood is working with the devil. Yeah. Well, well, you can't argue with that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but then Gregory said, well, in your religion, which was the Seventh Day at Venice, <laughs> Uh, in 100, 1850, you bought a printing press to put out a newsletter called Go Tell It to the World. Uh -huh. And D Desmond Doss goes, yeah, yeah. And he goes, well, the movies today, Desmond, are the, the newsletter. We can tell the story and for people to learn about God through the movies. And he goes, you, you read books, don't you? And Doss said, yeah, I read my Bible every day. He goes, well, there are satanical books out there, too. It don't blame the medium, blame the people making the movies. So the movie, he was he, he was a small guy. He was and five he, foot six, 130 and something pounds. And he saved pounds. how many people? Well, in the real story of it, close to 400 something people. Wow. But in the movie, and they call it Hacksaw Ridge because in Okinawa, this was sharp edges at this 400 foot escarpment they called it with a little pillbox where 17 Japanese soldiers were there and they could see the beaches and that's why nobody could take them because they would see anybody coming up 
and on one afternoon, uh, which was difficult because Das was, um, his Sabbath was Saturday. He was a vegetarian in World mm -hmm. War II mm -hmm. and uh, didn't touch a gun and they wanted him to, they wanted the whole company to take this escarpment on s the Sabbath. And he, he, he said, I don't do anything on Saturday. And so the men all, we're not going without Das. Right. And so the, the top brass came in and said, you join this army to save lives we could do it if you could just make a special day. And he goes, I will if you all kneel down and pray with me. Mm -hmm. And so they did. They, they, here's a guy that they called a coward. They beat up, beat up yeah. broke his nose, knocked yeah, his right. teeth out because uh -huh. he wouldn't touch a gun. Right. And now they love him and they worship him. And when 133 men climbed up 400 feet to that escarpment, when they went over the ridge, they were all mowed down in 27 seconds with a machine gun. Yeah. The movie, you, yeah, have, to the you movie. have to see the movie. Her husband wrote it, and it's an amazing And now movie. he's written a book called The Birth of Hacksaw Ridge, which is uh, talking about his childhood. He was no silly little guy. I mean, he jumped on ice cream trucks and trains. He broke his leg. I mean, he was like a little stuntman. He was stunt a tough man. guy. Yeah. He was a tough but guy. But he wrote the book about the making of Hacksaw? No, he wrote no. the book about Desmond T. Doss's childhood, how he oh. acquired his faith, okay. how he made this conviction. And up on that escarpment, that, that hill, that uh, Hacksaw Ridge, he hoisted these men up hundreds of pounds over his shoulder, ran hundreds of yards, and wrapped a rope around his waist in a tree stump and shimmied them down to save yeah, their lives, the I same ones that beat him up. Crazy. And not one Tremend bullet could hit him. Yeah. Tremendous now let me ask movie. you, where, where do you get that book before we go to the next subject here? Because I well, only have 15,000 to talk to you Let's about. see if I could get it right. Yeah. You can get it at the website AdventistBookCenter.com. Okay. Now, Adventist you, uh, and you've got, real quickly, you've got a new movie coming out, right, that you're creating? Or? Well, Gregory and I, uh, Gregory makes the big ones, and I make the little ones, but I write the story, then he writes his screenplay, and our last two, one was called Duke, and another one is called Talk to the Animals, they're worldwide distribution right now on Shorts TV. But I have another one that I just started uh, fundraising for mm -hmm. at Indiegogo.com. And it's called um, Life Goes On. Because? Because it does. That's right. You can't stop it. So you know? this is stop another it. inspirational film. It is. It's about uh, two people, one woman who lost her son in the war, and the other one, uh, the guy who lives next door, lost his wife and daughter. And, he, and the, the woman, has her pastor helped her find the light and climb out of this dark hole. And, but the guy now who's lost his wife and daughter, he doesn't want to climb out of his dark hole. Right. And Sally next door feels it's her duty to pay it forward and get Scott out of this dark hole. And we're hoping that, you know, with all the veterans and all the people that suffer from PTSD and 22 suicides, a day and people on antidepressants and not knowing what to do and they're shoving food down their mouth and drinking and everything yeah. to not get in touch with God to not find that light to pull themselves out of this dark hole yeah, right. we're hoping that you can see these two people work through this traumatic time where there's a solution and um, it's called life goes on so well, if you when go does that come out when is that I gotta, I'm raising the money now. Oh, okay. So, so you go to Indiegogo.com to, uh, and you're donating. Uh, one of the per you give perks when people donate so much money. So we're giving Gregory's book away, Birth mm -hmm. of Hacksaw Ridge, some kitty cat key guards that I have that go on your keys to protect yourself. And also Michael Pere will be starring in it along with me. So autograph pictures of him. And then also... We are donating 10% uh, to an amazing organization by a Navy SEAL, 22 years, got hit with an IED, and then he was put on drugs and just a, a, he just couldn't find his way out of the dark hole until a nutritionist took him, hormonally balanced him, cha took him off all his drugs, changed his diet. It's got him, got him into a healthy world, and he goes, oh, my Lord, i got to do this for the other vets. And so he created an organization called Vital Warrior, and we're going to give 10% nice. of that perk to the Vital Warrior, Warrior organization. Okay, so now um, I'm thinking that we sent over about five or 
six ladies for your program, I Fight for My Life? Well, I Fight for My Life is um, my company, and I've uh, brought in uh, my business partner, Jennifer Silverstein. She spent two years in the Israeli army, and she's a Krav Maga practitioner. I have three black belts in five combatant styles, Arju Kempo, one in Eskrima, which is Sticks and Knives Filipino, and then also I'm certified in, um, and Jennifer also, we're certified in Israeli Kapap, which is Krav Panina, Panin, it's face-to-face -face combat, along with um, defense, security defense in Puerto Rico, which are guns and then in Guatemala face to face. I experienced that growing up with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but now I know how to do it without leaving marks. But you're <laughs> great. Um, <laughs> but we don't have face, we don't have face to face combat in no, war. No, but anymore. you're teaching these ladies, well men too, right? Teaching ladies and men, we've taken all of our knowledge probably between the two of us 30, 60 years. Uh, and we've watered it down for civilian face-to-face -face combat. In because case they're attacked on the street? Or well, every two minutes you have a woman raped in our country. Every day a thousand women are sexually assaulted or murdered. You have over 200 children that are kidnapped for sex trafficking. Yeah. The amount of yeah. male bashing today is insane. Yeah. Uh, yes. So the thing is, we in war you push a button today and a missile goes over the real face-to-face -face combat uh, are in our in streets. streets yeah but so, where are they going to f is this i fight for my life dot com or yes ma'am you can go to i fight for my life dot com and we have seminars every three months and we take them for five hours you've been there yeah we take you for five hours and we teach you against chokes grabs rapes gun disarm knife disarms and the legal aspects of uh, what to say, how to not be stupid, yeah. how to, uh, you know, give me your keys, okay, give it to them. So give me your money, give it to them. Get in the car, no, you don't get in the car. So we teach you a lot of things you but shouldn't, this, shouldn't do. This is in Los Angeles. You can't do this over online. You can go to our website and see a lot of videos and things like that, okay. but we do travel, and if somebody gets us 20 or more, we have gone to synagogues, churches, oh, schools, okay. uh, and even women's organizations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to take you to the next thing that Flesh Your Fat for Good is connected with Spice of Life Meatless Meats, because our vegans do not exactly know how to always find enough of the plant proteins and you've got with flesh your fat for good it's all about the proteins when state in phase one we do not do any starches for rapid safe fat loss we talked about in one of our podcasts was our nutritional ketosis second one can't remember last the last you got to go through all of them the last one was yeah. nutritional ketosis. but um mm -hmm. but that's one. what we wind up doing and to put people into nutritional ketosis uh it's not hard to do and it takes from about a week to sometimes three to four weeks to do. But when you're a vegan, you have to learn not to just live off of potatoes and pasta and rice and all this stuff. Yeah. And the greatest thing that we've recommended to our vegans is your meatless meats. Great. So talk, <laughs> talk a little about the reconstituted meats, the ground round meats, and you know the little chunks of chicken and beef. These are, they're delicious. But I well, mean, it's it's defatted so, so say, that, say that three, three times, times fast. fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, it's a recipe that I insisted that the company Lumen Foods at the time. Uh, now it's been bought out by another company called Soyfoods.com, I believe. But anyway, they make um, our food, and my recipe was it has to be non-GMO. Mm -hmm. Defatted soy flour, yeah. Bragg liquid amino, natural seasonings, and um, a sunflower oil. So it's you recon. It's dry. It has a shelf life of a year, and uh, which is great because I really, when I first started the company, I was like, "Wow, third world airdrops." That would be really yeah, cool. Right. Or people like the hurricanes and they have nothing to eat. Oh, this yeah, perfect. Yeah. I really, but the government gets a little too persnickety about who they want to deal with. Um, maybe it'd be different now. Yeah. But Good anyway, try. you take um, uh, a bag and you boil it for 12 minutes and it swells up like soft, chewy chunks of chicken or beef, or you can get it ground or you can ground it yourself. You can make soups out of it because it has a broth. You can also stir fry it. Um, my son Luke, oh, 
loves it. It's He's delicious. constantly stir frying yeah. with the with the round, the big chunks. But I like to put it in the Cuisinart and grind it up, and then do all kinds of. You yeah, can, I like it in the chili. The chili, chili, chili is tacos, tremendous. Um, tremendous. You know, I make uh, um, lasagna. I've done oh, lasagna yeah. with it. You know, so it's an amazing good. thing. And I, one time, I I boiled the chicken for twenty minutes, drained the water, and put it in the Cuisinart and ground it up so that it was like a mush, mush, yeah. and then started adding the celery and the onions, and it came out like. Um, I like a chicken salad. Hmm. Delicious. And I slammed that so onto just, some lettuce. Yeah, okay, so yeah, like you a go scoop. Like, yeah, like, like this. Okay. Let me see. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you eat it. Like By that. the way, <laughs> in food combining, you don't mix plant protein and flesh. No. So, so that's what we No, teach. no, no. You, right. Well, no. So that, because, just to make that note. Right, here. no, exactly. Because a lot of people go, oh, I'm going to have um, some beef and beans and it's like a total miscombination. No, no, right. then you're then right. you're you're bloated and you're gassy. Right, right. And you get fat. Or so. your uh, meatless meats with flesh. Yeah. Can't no, do no. That. I cannot do that. No, but my meatless meats with vegetables, vegetables. and yeah. with um yes. grains. With grains yeah. and it's also combined. with yes. um beans like that's what you sure. say in your chili. But that's what we teach in here, okay? Yes. And uh, I just want everybody to know that um, our assistant here, Savannah Paget, come here. We're going to be talking about in our next <laughs> podcast, our lovely assistant is 21 weeks pregnant and we are gonna be talking about pregnancy, getting ready to be pregnant, while you're pregnant, after you're pregnant, and you're nursing, and then after that, um, because Savannah now is doing flush your fat for good for Pregos. Here, wait, say something. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's see your baby bump. There it is. Yeah. Never, yeah. all right. Okay. Never trust a pregnant woman. They're always hiding something. <laughs> <laughs> and hungry, trust me. Okay, thank you, Savannah. Thank you, Savannah. We love you. Um, we want to thank you all for uh, being with us uh, and and every week we love our flesh your fat for good buddies you guys are so uh, such an incredible culture of caring and get in our facebook room all you newbies flesh. go to our facebook flesh your fat for good uh, buddies, buddies facebook room and request to be a member we want to yes. thank spice williams crosby thank you guys for having me you're welcome thank you and if you'd like to see her again just let us know you guys email us at flesh your fat for good at gmail.com or you know, give us some comments behind uh, below this podcast and let us know uh, how you feel. And share our podcast amongst your friends. Share it, share it, share, share, share. share, share. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this was very fun for us. And again, please check us out on our website. Get our book. Get our charts. Get, get the, the GLA CLA, okay. and let us help you to get lean and healthy for good. So thank you again. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. You're listening to Flush Your Fat for Good with Jackie and Dr. Vicki, only on LA Talk Radio.